Been on the sidelines for a long time Now I'm finally getting in the game It's about time Cause this is my time This is my time The only thing I consider impossible is losing I've been waiting on the sidelines for a long time Now I'm finally getting in the game Good morning, y'all. What it do, baby? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to TD Fins Talk, home of the real Miami Dolphin fans. Oh, man, here we go. This is Friday, the end of the week. I hope everybody had a great week, a blessed week. Man, another week down. We just started 2023, and here we go already past the halfway part of the first month, man. Some tell me this year going to move by really fast, all right? Hit that like button if you're on your way in. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to TD Fans Talk right now. Got to talk about the Miami Dolphins firing defensive coordinator Josh Boyer. We're going to talk about that and more. Um, y'all push that like button. For all y'all who here who rocking with us this morning, let me know where are you from. I want to know where you're from this morning. Where is everybody from? Put it in the comment section. Andres, I see you, the homie Curtis Williams in the house. That's what's up. Word of mouth. What's up, homie? Ron McCray just entered the building with the MVP status. He ain't he went playing no games. He said, I'm a member and we rocking MVP status. Salute, homie. Thank you for your dedication to the channel. Thank you for your support to the channel. Love you for that, brother. Appreciate you, man. Man, salute to the oh my God. Salute to the people that rock with me, man. Salute to the people that rock with me. Salute to the people that say TD, my dude, man. That's my guy. I appreciate y'all, man. Real talk, all right? Ain't saying that to just be a job, make you feel better. Just saying that because it's the, it's the real deal, man. I truly do appreciate y'all. Y'all keep me strong. You keep me powerful. You keep me going. You keep me energized when these haters wear me out. You keep me going, man. I love y'all, man. Baby girl over here on her tummy time, Matt. So we babysitting at the same time, all right? Just FYI. Again, I'm having some fun. She growing big, man. All right, let me see where y'all from. Let me see where y'all from. What y'all talk? Ooh, Hialeah in the building. South Carolina. What's up, Vivian? Welcome, welcome. Vero Beach, Miami. I would assume we got some of those. DC in the house. Miami again. Uh, moving past fast for everyone except McDaniel is clock. His clock is always running slow from Philly. <laughs> what up, Philly? 305, Buffalo, sadly. Tough. Gavin, man, in enemy territory. South Florida, Miami, Central Florida, El Paso, Texas, Naples. I love Naples. Just beautiful place. Um, Opka, Florida. Is there an Opka, Florida, Andres, or a Popka? Is it Opka or a Popka? I've never heard of Opka. Florida, Salem, Oregon. Never heard of that either. I ain't heard of nothing in Oregon other than Oregon. <laughs> uh, we need a new QB ASAP, man. We got Tua, man. We got to go. Y'all stop hating on Tua. Y'all don't be no Tua haters. Don't be no Tua hater. <laughs> oh my God, please don't don't start with me today. I don't know what is going on with these mouses today, but they acting up. Shy Town in the house. Vic Fangio, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Pompano Beach. Let me use my scroller because this thing is definitely acting up. Rally, North Carolina, I'm assuming, is Virginia Beach. Two of the go. Get them people fired. Getting people fired. Palm Beach County. Polk County in the house. What up, Dre? Two a time, two a time. Two a time, two a time. Uh, let me see, Andres. I got an uncle in a pop um, beautiful city. Yeah, man. Listen, um, let's go ahead and get started, y'all. Uh, hit that like button on your way in the building once again. Um, I'm about to pick baby girl up anyway. Um, all right, let's dive into business. Let's take care of business. All right. Um, we fired Josh Boyer, we fired Josh Boyer. I, got, I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm one of the main people that got mixed emotions about this. Okay? 
And I'm sorry, I need to pull this out real quick. Should we have fired Josh Boyer? All right. All right. Y'all answer the poll in the comment section. Answer the poll for your boy. Baby girl down there talking. Yep. Hey, mama. Hey, mama girl. Let me grab. Her. Hey. Hey, wee, wee! You looking all funny? Had to put the mittens on her hands. She's starting to she done figured out what that finger is. Uh, uh we ain't doing that. We are not doing that, little mama. She's trying to figure out what that finger is. No, nope, we're not gonna do it. TD can't tell you what he thinks till. Um, he takes a poll. Now I can tell you what I think. I like to get a climate of where the people's minds are. Um, should we have fired Josh Boyer? Yes. 75% say yes, 25% says no. That's good enough on the poll. Um, listen, so I have mixed emotions on this, mixed thoughts on this. So let's talk about it, okay? Um let's get something straight. First of all. Josh Boyer shouldn't have been a defensive coordinator anyway. He should have been fired with the Flores regime to begin with. Even though word on the street, and let me re-say that word on the street so y'all don't get mad at me. TD said no word on the street that he was a snake behind Flores back anyway. Okay? And that's why he was retained to try to maintain the defense that Flores brought in anyway. Now, at the end of the day, Mike McDaniel should have brought in the staff he wanted to begin with, but he wanted continuity on that defense because he knew that he was going to need to rely on that defense to hold him down. Now, unfortunately, the defense never held him down until the end of the season and in the playoffs, and that still got him a hell. Because no matter how you want to slice it, the last three weeks, the defense actually has played really good football. Okay. Even though we lost to the Patriots, they technically played well versus them. Um, they played well versus the Jets. And they played excellent versus Buffalo in a playoff game. Okay? Now, I don't like Boyer. But before we get into the fact that I don't like him and I'm happy he gone, let's get to reality first. You're trying what what are we holding Boyer accountable for? What are we holding Boyer accountable for? Injuries or something? What are we holding him accountable for? Injuries? Is it his fault X is starting to fall off? I don't care if X is dealing with an injury, he's falling off. Is it his fault Byron was injured all year? Knowing that this defense was built, it doesn't work if X and Byron ain't on the field. Not on a consistent basis. It doesn't work till it's full capacity unless X and Byron on the field. If Byron on the field, Josh Allen has at least one less touchdown on those deep Hail Marys. So knowing that this, this offense, and, and this is another thing, Boyer has a philosophy where his defense starts on the back end with the secondary into the front. McDaniel's philosophy is from the front to the back. But they want to keep that exceptional play, that, that potential that Brian Flores brought in and what he built. 
But not only did is X not playing at a, a real Pro Bowl level, but you don't have Byron. You lose Nick Needham. Trill Williams, the dude, and he gone. Brandon Jones is out. I mean, come on. So what are you firing him for? Is it the play calling? Maybe it's the play calling. But I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I Like I said, I hate these head coaches who ain't all in these offensive coordinators' business. I do not like coaches who are not all in the offensive and defensive coordinators' business. What do I mean by that? All through the game. What you calling here? What you calling here? What are you calling here? I need a head coach who can recognize a good call and a bad call by an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator. Not just one way on offense and vice versa. Be a real head coach. Not one of those head coaches that's sitting there Hey, OC, he doing his whatever he do. Or DC, he doing whatever he do. If it don't work, I hold him accountable. No, get in the trenches with them. On these weird plays where you got everybody 20 yards off the line of scrimmage, and we like, what is Boyer doing? No, what is Mike McDaniel doing to even allow that crap? See, here's another issue in this league with these coaches, and only the great coaches get it. Players aren't the only ones that are supposed to be getting coached up. The coaches are also supposed to get coached up. That's why when I was watching Dion's documentary recently, I love when he said it. I coach my coaches. You're supposed to be coaching up your coaches. You're supposed to be all in their businesses, business, trying to make them you, trying to elevate them, get them to the next level. Not just say that's your job. If it work, it work. If it doesn't, then you're accountable. I agree, Joes, W, third and Boyer, TD, enough said. Third and Boyer is also third in McDaniel. He's the head coach. He's the head coach. Your job ain't just to be there walking around like you're cool and calling plays. See, this is what I'm saying. Like Joe said, you're right about that, but Boyer called the D and made little to no adjustments all year. Thank you. That's the point exactly. A real head coach can see his defense bleeding, and he goes over there and makes sure the adjustments are made. I don't want to see this anymore. I don't want to see that anymore. But you're just letting them just keep doing it, and you're sitting there. I'll wait on offense and call my plays. What kind of head coach are you? What kind of head coach are you? This is what makes the difference between the real coaches. Tridiculous. Now, continuing on this. He's the scapegoat. But at the same token, it ain't a big deal he getting fired because I believe coaches should be able to bring their own guys in anyway and to be holding on the leftover pieces is just a formality. I already knew this was inevitable. I told y'all two weeks ago, boy, you're going to be the scapegoat and y'all going to be like, yeah, somebody was held accountable. No, nah, it shouldn't have been Boyer. We wouldn't have been in most of these games if it wasn't for the defense in most cases. 
Now, with some games, you just absolutely got toasted. They are trash on the road. So, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Ain't no love lost. Now, here's my dilemma with it, though. And I hope I'm wrong. But we'll find out sooner than later. This is something we ain't got to wait two years for. We will know within six months. Seven and a half months. Here's the tough part. This is where a lot of people are going to get mad at me because, oh, a lot of y'all going to get mad at me because I'm going to be calling players out, okay? Um, I am terrified now. I am terrified that we may have the worst defense in the NFL next year. I said this over a year ago. After one year, Mike McDaniel is going to transition into a 4-3 zone defense. I said that a year ago. Mike McDaniel will eventually transfer into a 4-3 zone defense. Just like San Francisco. I said they're going to ride this out for a year, and eventually he's going to start transitioning into a 4-3 zone defense. Now, that is going to be disastrous for us if he does it right away. So depending on which defensive coordinator he brings in, if we transfer into a 4-3 defense, I am telling y'all now it is about to be a straight-up disaster for at least a year or a year and a half. You know why? We don't have no 4-3 personnel on this defensive roster. <laughs> this roster was built for the 3-4 with the edge rushers that also have the speed to flex out and try to guard. This defense, out of 11 guys on the field, four at best can play, can, can adapt to zone. Four. And let me tell you, players like Javon Holland will not be as productive as you always, as we look at him. He will not be. You're going to get mad about that. Time will tell. Brandon Jones will. Okay. Xavier Howard, it is a wrap. It is a wrap. Byron probably ain't going to be here, no matter, okay? None of your linebackers whatsoever. Christian Wilkins, yes. Zeeler, no. Ogba, no. Chubb, no. Ingram, no. Van Ginkle, no. Because I am telling y'all now, when we do get pressure on our D-line, the only reason we do is because we start our formation with five guys on the line. And when you start with five guys on the line, you're getting a one-on-one -on -one look in the most cases with everybody. I know Chubb just came from a 4-3, but guess what? He just played in a 3-4. They had five on the line and couldn't do nothing. Six, seven games and one, uh, one strip sack was all we remember. You can say I'm making stuff up all you want, but mark my words. Watch. L what, let your time will tell. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Most of the guys on this defense thrived and shined because of the scheme, the zero look, which always allows somebody to be free or get a one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody ain't getting one-on-ones no more when you're rushing four. 
The only person that might eat out of all of this is Christian Wilkins. The rest of them, you're going to get both of the edges double more. If we run a 4-3, trust me when I tell you. Gerard, don't be quiet. I ain't trying to predict no bad future. We've seen this. This team can't run 4-3. Because we can't get to the quarterback. And when you run in that raggedy zone in the back, if you're giving quarterbacks all day, we get ripped apart. We've seen this already. This ain't nothing new. We've seen it under Flores when we couldn't run the zero because of injuries. Do you remember that one and seven? We didn't zero anybody. We didn't zero anybody. We ran that raggedy zone. And we back the guy out and hope that we can get four there or we never could. We done seen this. Y'all acting like it's brand new. We don't have the personnel for that crap. I mean, gosh, you let y'all. Last year showed you everything you needed to know. Why do y'all acting like when we went one and seven, that wasn't zone and we wouldn't send in four? Like, have y'all forgot? You, you trying to predict the negative. Ain't no predicting. We already got a sample size of that crap. Who would you rather? Whoever is going to um, deploy a man base that loves to send pressure? See, Mike McDaniel don't want to send pressure. He want to have dogs on the edge where he doesn't need to send pressure. And I'm telling you now, we don't have that. Y'all think we got it. We don't have it. Coming from San Francisco, look at the dogs they got. Mike McDaniel told y'all, if it was up to me, I'll draft the edge every year. Because... You win in the NFL if you got two dogs on the edge that can get there without sending a blitz because you need as many as you can to defend. If you can send an organic four-man pass rush, you can have a great defense, even in zone. But I'm sorry. It's not what we have. We don't have those dogs. We think we do because they were thriving and, and may, putting up numbers when we were deploying a zero blitz when most of the time everybody ate. Nobody didn't eat under the zero format. Van Ginkles of the world, even Jerome Baker would eat, at least getting to the quarterback twice a game. Brandon Jones. I mean, every game that we primarily deploy zero heavily, everybody ate. Everybody. Everybody, this is Jerome Baker's play. This is a Landon Roberts play. This is um Ogbaugh's play. Oh, Christian Wilkins up the middle. Oh, Phillips finally. Then Ginko, yeah. Everybody ate. And every time we went back to a traditional set, man, what are we doing? What is Boyer doing? Stop running that zone. And the zone might have been just fine if the regular guys up front would get there without the zero look. That's why we even that's why we start running a zero look, even if we wanted to go into a four-three zone. We all come to the line and back out. So hopefully our guys got an advantage so they don't get double teamed right away. Y'all let people now don't get me wrong. We may be able to transition into a great defense within two years, maybe. But don't think that, that we, I'm telling y'all, we don't have the personnel. I promise you, we do not have the personnel like you think. And I agree, Vic Papo. Um, yet we don't have the personnel yet, but to get a full roster of personnel, how long do you think that's going to take? How long you think that's going to take? I can tell you now, they're going to let some of these guys go now 
and they're going to go get half of the personnel this season. But you're only halfway there. And then in the third year, you're going to get the other half. If they survive or make it. Let me ask y'all a question. If we don't make the playoffs next year, what you think going to happen? Well, you know, the third year, we'll put it back together. You, know, you think that's going to happen? If we don't make the playoffs next year, you think um, McDaniel is going to get a third year? I'm just curious. I don't know. What y'all think? Not saying we won't. I feel like our big guys up front can handle 4-3. Other than Christian Wilkins, who winning one-on-one -on -one battles? Who getting to the quarterback? Who getting to the quarterback? And the point is, right now, you got five guys on the D-line. So the O-line, in their mind, I ain't no double teams right away. So now, when you running four guys to the quarterback, O-lines are double teaming the edge rushers. The O-line is double-teaming the edge rushers. I'm telling you, Christian may eat and Zeeler may be. Phillips ain't getting to no quarterback. Phillips almost getting to the quarterback. Let's just be honest. Phillips done improved and gotten better. But again, that's in a five-man rush. Let's be honest about Jalen Phillips. He almost getting to the quarterback. You see Phillips motor running. Oh, oh he was that close. Every time. Every time. Every time. Now, you play a raggedy old line, all of them getting there. Call it how it is. He's definitely improved. But let's not sit here and make it seem like he beasting everybody and getting 15 sacks. You know what? I never even checked. Let me see how many sacks Jalen Phillips had. Did he get the 10? Did he get the 10 this year? Hmm. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Y'all want to sit here and say Phillips. If you ain't get the 10, leave me alone. If you ain't even get the 10, you, you ain't impacting nothing. Let me see. You ain't get the 10. I don't want to hear it. All right, here we go. How many this man had? He probably, I'm going to tell you now, he probably had eight. Let me see. Uh, where you at? Uh, where the totals, man? Hey, get out of here, man. This man has seven sacks, man. Y'all stop. You see what I be talking about? Y'all stop. Y'all stop. Stop it. Man played all 17 games and got seven. Leave me alone. Stop arguing me just to argue with me. Stop arguing with me just to argue with me. Man got seven sacks in 17 games. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Actually, he went down this year. He had eight and a half last year. He had eight and a half last year. Y'all got y'all got to stop. Man, who got the most on the team? Let me look that up. Who got the most on the team? We probably ain't got a single person over eight this year. Let me look this crap up, man. Jesus. T try and tell me they'll be able to handle a 4-3 when they can't even handle five guys on the line right now and our highest sack leader probably got eight. Christian Wilkins, I mean, let me see how many he got. Let me see. How, please, Wilkins, do me a favor and get the 10, Wilkins. You do me a favor and show me 10, Christian. Jeez, I mean, give us some light. Man, please, Christian. And I doubt that. He probably got five. He a nose tackle. Let me see. Let me shut up before he shot me and had 10. 
Like 2022. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Christian Wilkins got three and a half sacks this year, man. And he went down from last year. He went down from four and a half. Y'all don't listen, man. <clears throat> Do we have anybody over seven? Do we have anybody over seven? I've been telling y'all for four years now we've never had an organic pass rush. And that's why I love Flores' defense because he creates pressure. This is what I told y'all. Flores creates pressure. His scheme. We do not have the personnel that gets there. So stop arguing with me just to argue with me. I ain't trying to take a poop on none of these players. I love our D-line. Under Flores' system, y'all going to hate them under, under a full three. I promise you, you ain't going to like them. Man, we're chum. The contract wasn't worth it. What happened to Christian? Come on, somebody step up. Well, Ogba got hurt, and that might be why, man. Stop, man. Stop. Oh, man. Melvin got six. Six. Okay. That's good for him. TD has no idea has pass, how pass rush works. Maybe I don't, but they don't either. Ain't nobody double digits, baby. 17 games. You done added a game in the, in the season, and we rocking our highest with seven sacks. Get out of here. I ain't got to know how it works. They don't either. They don't either. Seven sacks. We ain't got no dogs on the D line that's that's relentless and getting at the quarterback. We don't. I know that much. Yeah, but they create a lot of pressures. Like I said, ain't nobody getting there. And Mike McDaniel is going to want a defense, an organic 4-3 pass rush that can get there. Now, you let these other people around here sell you, sell you on why this is a good idea to go to 4-3, if that's what we do. I'm just hoping we don't unless we bring in the right personnel. Wait till he break out, TD. Who? Who? Who break out? Because everybody on the D-line headed in the wrong direction. They got less than they did last year. I want y'all, <laughs> I want y'all to really think about this, right? I want y'all to think about it. I want y'all to think about this, okay? Let me pull it back up real quick. Hold on. <laughs> This is funny to me. I want y'all to really think about this here because I'm not going to let y'all get past this, okay? Jalen Phillips, I want y'all to really think about this because I think he is a good player, but he needs to be in a Flores-type system. But listen, and that's what they brought me in for. Be honest, okay? Because I know some of y'all just like to argue with me, argue. Be honest about this. Did we not at the end of last year say, Jalen Phillips is okay, but we're going to need a lot more. Jalen Phillips is all right, but we're going to need a lot more. We're going to need more than him, more from him. We're he going to have to increase his sacks. He barely got there. We don't even remember when he got there. We know he did some. Did we not all say that? Be honest. Weren't we all saying he's going to need more? He's going to have to get to the quarterback more. He got to get more sacks. That was the narrative last offseason. Because his rookie year wasn't terrible, wasn't bad, but we all know it felt underwhelming. So all of a sudden, he's a dog and stuff, and he had one and a half less sacks. All of a sudden, Jalen Phillips, that dude, but he had one and a half less sacks. This is that Miami homegrown love obsession of our players instead of calling it what it is. Now, don't get me wrong. He was a little – I like his I like his play better this year for the fact that he was a little bit more relentless this year. That's why his tackles were up. 
And that's why his QB hits were up. Last year, he had 16 QB hits. This year, 25. He was more aggressive this year, but we all know you got to get there. That's what you, that's the position. You got to get there. It's crazy how we be forgetting this stuff so soon. We just be like, and, and, and let me let me say this too. Y'all don't understand. Last year, Jalen Phillips only started five games. He only started five games. He played all 17, but he his minutes, he was a starter for only five. This year, the man started 15 out of the 17 games. And he had more sacks. Y'all remember the first eight games when we were one and eight? They barely even played Jalen Phillips. It was like you put him out there in certain packages. Y'all remember that? Sacks in possessions, Nate Francis. I agree. Hurries can disrupt the quarterback, but it ain't a guarantee. Because some quarterbacks under pressure, they better than most. Go look at Joe Burrow numbers. Some quarterbacks under pressure are higher than when not under pressure. Shockingly, it's crazy. Anyway, all I'm saying, this ain't see another thing. This ain't got nothing to do with Jalen Phillips is the player and all of this and that, right? The point of the matter here is my point of this team was not built to run 4-3. This team is trash in zone, by the way. It's just a fact. We've lived it. I've proven this over and over. It shouldn't even have to be proved. This goes all the way back to Matt Burke. And I'm telling you, look at where Mike McDaniel comes from. Their philosophy is zone with a great pass rush. But they also have the people in zone in the linebacking core who can cover their areas, man. They can match zone. When you come in my area, I'm glued to you. I ain't just sitting there waiting on the quarterback to throw and then go get you in my area. That's what we have. We, we got reactors. We got people that react instead of being proactive. So anyway, man, Josh Boyer getting fired. It was inevitable. It was going to happen. I just hope that we bring in somebody who maybe they play some zone, but they still have an aggressive nature in them where they can – you know, play man coverage and dial up um, pressure, blitz packages. We'll see. We'll see. Who do you want, TD? Uh, I'm going to be honest, man. There ain't nobody in particular I have in mind that I've even thought of. To be quite honest with you, some of these guys are great defensive minds, but they don't have the personnel here, so it's going to be an issue until they get who they want in here. Um, let me, let me, you want to know who I really want? I want anybody who can coach up talent because the way our money is going to work with our offense about to suck it all up, all the money up, we need a defensive coordinator who can develop talent. Can we get somebody who could develop linebackers? Who could develop corners? We need somebody who can develop talent. I like Lovey Smith. Vic Fangio obviously is probably the top of my list. But again, are we going to be able to execute the way they want the game played?
Do you mean like Vic Fangio? Exactly. Are we going to be able to a- execute with some of these guys the way that these coaches want to? See, these coaches will come in, coach it up, and say, you know, I need a, I need a true, like I need a, like we don't have a true zero. Y'all do get that, right? We don't have a true zero tech. Unless y'all think we do. I mean, y'all give me your opinion. Do we have a true zero tech? Do we? Come on, football heads. Do we have a true zero tech? Yeah, Raekwon, we were all hoping, right? But no, we were all hoping. We were all hoping, but no. no. I know Fangio is. That's why I'm like, man, if he comes in, that's, you know. So, so that's a part of it too. No, no true zero tech. So you're kind of, you're kind of limited in what you really want to accomplish in a scheme. You see what I mean? Like you got a true zero tech. Now you can get the max out of what you are really trying to do with your D. I'm coming mama. My boy TD, what's good, Brody? Um, Miles Garrett, send us Phillips, Lord. Um, uh, what's good, Brody? Hey, do you really think we're gonna go get a QB to start over Tua? Because I'm tired of the crap, man. I didn't say that's what we were gonna do. You said, do you really think? I ain't I ain't thinking it to begin with right now. Right now, I'm tired of it. I don't already concede it. It's Tua time, it's Tua time. Let's go Tua. And hopefully he can be the greatest version of himself and we can go with a Super Bowl with him. If not, yep, wasted our time. It's that simple, man. Zach said, I asking a question. What question, Zach? 46 sacks is the team average in the NFL season for 2022. Oh, okay. What's the Dolphins? What's the Dolphins? I mean, I don't even know, honestly. Um, I'm not saying you said anything. Oh, okay. Um, can't run a 3-4 without a much better nose. Um, Davis and Jenkins adds nowhere close to good enough. Our personnel suits a 4-3 when it doesn't, man. All we need, I'm going to be honest with you, all we needed was that true zero, and these guys might have been getting off from a schematic standpoint if we had the true zero in the 3-4. Now, they they may be better in a 4-3 for the simple fact that we don't have a zero tech, so it's just like playing a 4-3 almost feeling like. How would you feel about Rex Ryan, TD? Uh, Rex Ryan, who on TV? Uh, hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. Again, man, some of these guys, man, I'm, I, I need new innovation. Defense is getting harder to play with the rules. I need new innovation. Why didn't we play man coverage um, last year? Um, last year as in this year or last year as in Flores um, last year? If you're talking about Flores last year, we played tons of man coverage starting in week seven, if I'm not mistaken, or eight. The first um, seven games, uh, eight games, we didn't play much man because we didn't have the personnel on the back end and they were injured, laboring injuries. So we decided to play a lot of bimba don't break zone coverage. 
You are just having a ball, ain't you? She is trying to rip this thing off her hand. Because we're trying to keep her from sucking her thumb. Where's your other hand mitt? Anyway. Um, this year, we played tons of man covers this year. Now, of course, we ran a, a, some raggedy zone in some games. You're like, what are we doing? But we played a lot of man um, coverage in games that we, in my opinion, did well. Bills made them fire to D.C. Oh, boy. Very cute CD. Thank you, brother. You was just having fun today. So soon it will be a flag football. I think this is why they are doing it for the Pro Bowl. Now, this league is too soft. Players can't tackle the QB like they used to because of baby man Tom Brady. Uh, well, yeah, there's Tom Brady rules, but now you got the tour rules. Right after he got hurt, now you now you got to roll off of the quarterback. You can't all that stuff. I don't know. That's the league we in. All right. Slipping Jimmy said, Greer only cares about fan service to keep his job. To a nears say jump. He says, how high? Boyer was two a near scapegoat for 2022. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Dolphin fans understand this. We are in an era. If you love Tua, enjoy this era. If you don't think Tua the guy and want him gone, you got to go through this era. These are, this is what we do. This is what the Dolphins do. We got eras. They're going to go through them. And um, I'll say this. I'm still holding out hope that the Dolphins will do the right thing. It ain't an issue to want to move forward with Tua and hope that he can still be something. Nothing wrong with that. But if you don't go bring in a competent veteran, I don't care if it's to compete or be the backup. I'm talking about a good one. Then I'm sorry. You literally are, this organization is incompetent. You're gambling. You're willing to throw a full season away. Tua can go out there in week one and be out for the year. Tua can go out there week one and what if something could happen, he missed four weeks. And you did nothing. You did nothing. No, I can't believe that they're that incompetent. So I believe they will get somebody and we'll see. It's just hard for me to think of a backup that's worthy. I just don't see a backup that's worthy, that's cost-effective. Hey, TD, I know we're talking about the defense, but how many bad games did Tua have this year? Doug said he only had three bad games. Uh, Well, you got to define bad. It depends on how you define bad, Okay. What do people define as bad? All right, so I'll just look at it like this. If you were below average, I'll count those as bad. First game versus the Patriots, below average. Cincinnati game, I'm going to leave it alone as a not applicable because he didn't finish. I don't even want to grade it, but he threw a pick and almost threw two more. Okay? Pittsburgh Steelers game, below average. All right. Houston Texans, I'm going to give them average. So I ain't going to count it as a bad game. I'm going to give them average. We already know about 49ers. We know about the Chargers. And I'm sorry. Green Bay has to go down as bad. And I'm sorry it was his best game if you take away the three picks. But them three picks, bad game. He was the only reason we lost. Bad game. The only reason. 
So he had five bad games this year. Five bad games. In my opinion, right? Because some people, the first Patriots game in Pittsburgh, he was just rusty from the injury, still bad. So I got him at five bad games for the season. First game, Patriots, was not good. Matter of fact, I mean, let's go look at what PFF say. I'll pull it up. We'll pull it up, all right? Let's see what PFF say. Anything under 60 pretty much ain't a good game. Uh, Give me a second. I'm going to share the screen in a second. Let's see, share screen, window, Tua, Tag of Valoa, Taggy V, Tua, Taggy V. All right, let's view Tua and premium stats. And let's go Tua, man. Tua, Tag of Valoa, offense, grades. All right, so anything under 60, in my opinion, is bad. You got the New England, like I said, Pittsburgh, like I said. Houston, they actually rated them really well, so that's why I say average, but, yeah, okay, I guess. San Francisco, they have him as a 63, so I guess it wasn't as bad, but we all know that was bad. Um, Chargers, Buffalo, and Green Bay. And I told y'all, I don't know why people think Tua played good in the Buffalo game. All they thinking about is the fact that he hit Waddle over the middle for a touch and he ran for the touchdown and Tyreek on a wide open um over the top. That's all they thinking about. He threw those two touchdowns to keep us in the game. The man had horrible ball placement the whole game. And I didn't even count that on on, on the thing. For bad. But according to PFL, three, four, he, he got five with PFL. And San Francisco was bad, so six. But I'm going to say five. 65 and under is bad. Yeah. Did I say 65 or 60? I was trying to be generous with 60. I think when we first did this a few weeks ago, the cutoff was 64. PFF is so bad, yeah, until you want to use it for a point that fits your narrative. PFF is the most accurate thing that you can have because they take it all into consideration. This is why that QBR and passer rating is trash. It don't take none of it into consideration. If somebody throw a 30-yard pass and the receiver just straight up drops it, the passer rating takes a, a t- get hurt for it. The QBR takes a hit for it. If a player drops a touchdown, the passer rating in the QBR takes a hit for it. PFF don't penalize you for that. And vice versa. If you throw a two-yard bubble screen that go for 80 yards, yeah, you get credit for throwing the bubble screen, but they ain't finna give you a high factor like you done threw 80 yards and throwing dimes for a touchdown. They not finna give you all the credit for that. Versus somebody actually throwing a 50-yard dime in stride and tight coverage. That gets a lot more credit. PFF is the most accurate thing out here. Because they take the context of everything that goes down. Big time throws, drops, run grade, pass grade, everything. But like I said, This is what PFF has him as. Now, how many great games did he have this year, according to PFF? We know Detroit Lions and Cleveland, that's three. And according to them, Baltimore and Buffalo, even though he didn't do much in that Buffalo game, 189 yards. But he didn't make any mistakes. He didn't have any major issues at all. So five. Five good, I mean, five great, five bad. 
one, two, two average, two average games. Unless we decide, well, six bad, five great, two average. That's what the breakdown comes to. Six bad, five great, and two average. So, so there you have it. That's where you put your composite. What does that even out to? You got to decide. Wow, TD, you mean Tua has six bad games under 65% out of 13 games? Why are we even debating if we pr proceed with Tua as our starter? It is time to move forward now. You know, well, here's the difficult part to it. You just got to look at the five good games. People are trying to make that justify. Like, 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 take his whole career, y'all. Look at this little shade of blue in the middle. Just because this shade of blue and dark green happened, he a, franchise, he a franchise quarterback. He a franchise quarterback. This is what they believe. This shade of blue right in the middle is justification that he is a franchise quarterback. This is what's happening. This is what they, they He was so great in these three games that it justifies he's a franchise quarterback against three of the worst teams in the league defensively. TD, can you show PFF for Tua last year? I'll try in a second after I get these super chats. Your thoughts on inquiring about John Fox as DC? Can't remember last time um, we had both sides of the ball elite in the season, um, same season. I'm 45 years old. I'm down for anything that's a big boy move. That's 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 top notch. That evens out to two of being mid at best. I agree. I'm I'm but I'm for it, bro. I'm for it. I, I'm interested to see which direction McDaniel wants to go. All right, let's see if we can do last year. All right, 2021. Let me see. All right, 2021. Here it is. Under Brian Flores. According to this, he had one, two, three good games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bad games, and one average game. Three good games, nine bad games, and one average game, according to last year. Or in the last year. Let's go his rookie year. All right, rookie year, <clears throat> no good games. Um, Above 65, that's one, two, three, four, five, six average games. Below 65, there's one, two, three... Four in four bad games. So, 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 so this is what get gets me when we talk about good games, right? When we try to talk about good games, you know, your games in the eighty or above, eighty or above are the good games. Let's do the math here. This is 10 games his rookie season. He don't have a single one. Hold on. Let me let baby girl down. She knocked out. All right. Let me write this out. Rookie season. Let me, let me get this. 10 games. All right, so let me see. What is this again? 
All right. One, two, three, four, five, six average. Four bad. This is just all PFF. It ain't got to be the gospel to you. It ain't got to be accurate to you. But it's all we have right now. Let's go to 2021. I got I, because I got to do this math on how many games we talking about here. All right, ten games, and now we got how many games? Five, ten, thirteen. Thirteen games last year. I mean, two years ago. One, two, three. Good games. One average, nine bad. Okay, let's go to the next year. We want to talk about a full body of work. All right, so one, two, three, four, five good games. Wait, let me count how many games though. Five, ten, thirteen again. So he missed four, missed four, missed six because it was only 16 in that season. All right. So one, two, three, four, five good games, five good. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six bad. And. Two average. Wait, is it? Yeah, two average. All right. 10, 20, 30, 36 games. We got eight good games. Nine average. And... 19 bad. Missing 14 games. That's what we have. Oh, thank you for saying that. Hold on. Let me go back. His rookie year, you said nine games because the Jets game, he played one or two downs. Let me see. Where is that? I don't see that on here. Is it week six? Is it week six? Two passes. God dog it, you right. So we got to take away one of his average games. Lord. So we have five average games. Is seven and that's nine games, so that leaves eight average games for the career 35 games played and 15 miss. You are correct, you are correct. My bad. Let me look for any more anomalies that got like two passes or something. So let me make sure any other that has single digit passes. All right, 2021. Um, Buffalo game, he got knocked out. He got hurt, but he did play it. He started that game. Um, the game he came in, I'll give him credit for the Baltimore. I'm pretty sure that's helping him anyway. Yeah, that's that's about it. All right. That's what you have, ladies and gentlemen. Two of them had eight good games in his career, eight average games in his career, and 19 bad games. 16 good or average and 19 bad. When you average all that out, he's below average. But I'm going to be honest with you. I want to take away the rookie year. I just feel like rookie year, unfair. He ain't had no good game. Let's take away the rookie year, okay? 
That leaves him with 26 games, and he missed eight. Okay, that gives him eight good, three average, and 15 bad. Still don't matter. Still don't matter. We took out the rookie season. They gave him eight good games, three average, and 15 bad. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, all he does is win. He we actually won in some of these bad games. Don't get me wrong, because the defense actually, actually just, especially last year, especially last year. But this year, finally, we start losing in his bad games. But this is my point. Whether you want to look at his whole career or just the last two seasons of 26 games, we're trying to sit here and act like this man is a franchise quarterback for winning less than 30 for playing good less than 30% of the time. I agree. Tua, 31% of the time will have a good game. Close enough to one out of every three games. Here's what y'all got to understand. We could get rid of last year and just talk about this year, and this is where the headache comes because we could go with his best season, which is this year. The man had five, five good games, two average, and six bad. That means about half the time he's going to have a bad game. Oh, we're not even counting the games he missed. Let's add that up. In three seasons, he missed 15. He missed the whole season in three seasons. He's played two seasons. He's played two seasons because he's missed 15 games. In the last two years, he missed half a season. Eight games missed in the last two years. Unfortunately, it's one thing to miss games during the season, but this year you miss the most critical games. And we still justifying that. We justifying that. Compare it to Herbert. I mean, I, I think it's unfair because it's unnecessary. I mean, we, we know what time it is. It is what it is, bro. We know what time it is. Do we need to compare it to Herbert? Do we really need to compare to Herbert? Y'all still asking to do it. All right. I mean, I just feel like this is a waste of time. We know what we're going to get. Yeah, I do the comparison. All right, man. Let me do the math for Herbert for three years. Look at it. I mean, I mean, God, dog, look at the chart, man. Look at it. You, you can just feel the difference in the chart. Even if it ain't as many great games, you can still feel the difference. See, the thing about Herbert is he's just been right there the whole season solid. It ain't had to be great this year because he wasn't great this year, but he was solid. That's what you got out of this, just solid. Somebody said, yeah, a bunch of losses. What was it? You said Herbert had a bunch of losses? Always losing? I'm sorry, but Herbert got more wins than two of this year. What are y'all talking about? He got more wins than two of this year. What are y'all talking about? And then, then I got to scroll down on his. You know why I got to scroll down on his? Because he played the whole season.
We go to last year's. Let's see the color pattern. Just, just night and day. Gosh, just night and day. This is last year. Go to the rookie season. Go to the rookie season. <laughs> to a whole rookie year, yellow and orange. This is without his receivers for, for a large part of this year. This is with one of the worst O-lines in the NFL. This is with the most injuries in the NFL. A depleted secondary. This is with broken ribs, fractured ribs, all of that. Not this year, this, the year I got up, but we're talking about 2022. When things aren't perfect around Herbert, this is what he does. When things aren't perfect around him, when his receivers are banged all up, not playing, when he fractures his ribs, when his O-line is putrid, when half the team is hurt, when the secondary is gone, this is what Herbert does. Now, let's go to Tua when all of that happens. Let's even go to last year with Tua when, when all of that happens. See, you judge quarterbacks on when everything ain't perfect. Herbert didn't have a perfect um, situation around him this year. But look at what he uh, – did you see what he did? This is Tua without a perfect situation. Let's count the yellows and oranges. Let's count the yellows and oranges for Tua in a non-perfect situation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine out of 13. Nine out of 13. Count Herbert in a non perfect situation. Yellows and orange. And reds, if there's any. And number two up there is green, not yellow. But anyway, let's count them. One, two, two. Well, oh, no, three, three. I almost skipped the orange. I don't want to cheat them. One, two, three. Against Denver, who had the top defense in the NFL at the time. Minnesota should have played better. They trashed me. Um, and Baltimore, who's always a top D, even though two had six touchdowns against them. Uh, fourth quarter, collapse. Compared to Hurts. You don't want to see Jalen Hurts. Hurts is better than all of them. Hurts this year. Wild card. Why do they have Hurts? Wait, what is this? At Tampa. That's weird. Do I have the right? Yeah, Jalen Hurts. Uh, this is weird. I don't know why they have a um, wild card thing with Tampa here. It's obviously a type of uh, mistake. It hurts. One, two, three. He got three on the season. That don't make sense. I still don't understand that Jalen Hurts one. Oh, 2021. That makes sense. All right. My bad, y'all. <laughs> Last year. All right. So. Yeah. This is what you got for Hertz. One, two games, and I don't even know why he played that last one. But he did. Get gotta get that rust off. But he was trash. Giants. Ooh, and they play him again. It's gonna be tough then. Two games. And they both division games. Washington and the Giants. And if you're gonna have a tough game, it should be a division game. Shut up, Tyson. Get out of here. Talk about we're going to draft to a brother. 
Get out of here, man. TD loves ignoring when exposed. Uh, can you help me understand what you're talking about, Ryan? Exposed. How I'm ignoring when exposed. Maybe I'll go up, see if you got another message that's supposedly exposing me. Using off is trash. PFF is awful to back you or oh, your bias. Call it what you want, Ryan. Do you even know how PFF is calculated? And do you even know how QBR passer rating is calculated? I bet you don't know either. And I know you don't know either because if you did, you'll know it ain't trash. You'll understand a composite score that takes context into consideration. One moment here. Uh, uh, give me a second. I need to get this mouse working. I'm tripping because I can't scroll. He's telling me read a super chat and I can't even scroll. Let me try. Give me a second, bro. I didn't even know I skipped the super chat. But okay, 300 more attempts, same touchdowns to a check down, Chad. What? Okay, let's break down whatever he's talking about. 300 more attempts, same touchdowns as to a check down, Chad. Who is check down, Chad? Who is Chad? Because I want to understand what you're talking about. And who you're comparing them to. Because you're saying I got exposed off of that. Herbert had 300 more attempts and same TDs. Do y'all remember um, the Chargers um, playoff game that we talked about this? What, what, does it, what does it matter that he had 300 more attempts? When Herbert get down there in the red zone and is third and goal from the six, do the Dolphins run it in? Herbert them do. With Eckler, having more touchdowns has nothing to do with it. That has nothing to do with nothing. It's all in relation to the offense you run. If we call the call, if we call the play where we tried to run it in and we run it in, Tua don't get the touchdown. They had 300 more attempts with the same touchdowns got to do with anything. Has nothing to do with it. Not a thing. Pull this up. Now, you want to talk about something that's fair? You want to talk about something that you can actually compare? You compare percentages and averages, not raw numbers. Touchdowns can never have a 25.4 or nothing. That's a raw number. You want to go off of the things that have averages. Those are the only things you can compare fairly. And, and, and you, and you want to talk about comparison? Tell me why Tua got a 64% completion percentage and Herbert got a 68.2. Tell me why Tua is four points lower than Herbert on completion percentage. Tell me why Her Herbert, without a perfect situation, still threw 25 touchdowns. Because when Herbert was in a Tua situation, when it was perfect, like last year, he put up 38. His rookie year, he put up 31. Where was Tua matching those numbers? Where were those numbers getting matched? Oh, it don't matter. You could average it out even if he wasn't hurt. He wouldn't have been up there. Herbert's check down. He getting the yards. You want to talk about Herbert being checked down? 
but he's 68.2 percent completion. Check down Herbert gets 4,739 yards this year. Check down Herbert got 4,739 yards this year in a bad situation. Do you remember Tua in a bad situation when he was checking down? Couldn't even get 2,600 yards. Oh, no, no, no. You ain't got to say don't listen to this clown, TD. I love, I love people like this because I get to eat through them. I get to eat through them all day. I get to eat through them. He has Eckler, 80-plus catches. I guess he's the smart one then. I guess he's the smart one. When Tua didn't have everything around him and he was checked down Charlie, he couldn't put up half of Herbert's numbers. Now that Herbert is in a situation where he ain't had everything around him, O-line busted, wide receivers hurt, fracture ribs, oh, but he can still throw for 4,700 and get 25 touchdowns. How many touchdowns did Tua get whenever he wouldn't? He didn't have everything around him? Come on. Don't disappear now. Answer the question. Answer the question. This man got double the career yards. Double the career touchdowns. Double. You make absolutely no sense. Ain't even close, bro. You'll do yourself uh, more. Bro, Tua was a 64% completion this year, man. Herbert ain't had a single year under 66. Herbert checks down what you think Tua been doing for the first two years and still couldn't even come close to those numbers. Check down Herbert, Tua can't even compete with. Call it what it is. You know what? Do you want better? Sometimes people just need it planted right in their face. You might want to screenshot these and save them. You want to know what, what, what real production is in a good situation and a bad situation. You might want to take this and screenshot it. Put it under your pillow. You want to know what real production is? Take this and screenshot it in a good situation and a bad situation. When you check down, of course, you'll have a high percentage. Yeah, when you check down, though, you don't usually have the yards like this, though, right? Because Tua had a solid percentage, you know, his first two years, right? But where were them yards at? And when you averaged it out for him playing a single, a full season, he still wouldn't break 4,000. 4, so where were them yards at? Yeah, he producing wins. He made the playoffs and clinched it three weeks before the season was over. Something obviously getting better over there in a bad situation. He finally making the playoffs. He made the playoffs three weeks before we did. He made the playoffs when Tua was still on the field. See, Herbert could have got hurt right there in that game three weeks before it was all over and his team was still in. But we still needed Tua. He was nowhere to be found.
And y'all want to bring up Austin Eckler. Like we ain't got two players better than Eckler. <laughs> like we ain't got two players better than Eckler. This man, best receivers done missed by six, seven games this year. And not until like four weeks left in the season was the first time they all got to play together. Get out of here, man. Oh, boy. Uh, Herbert blew a 27-0 lead. Talk about that. Well, I thought we were comparing Herbert to Tua. I can't talk about Herbert's lead he blew because it was in the playoffs. Tua ain't got no playoff experience to compare. So I, I want to keep this fair. I only want to talk about things that, that we can compare the two against. Tua has no playoff experience to compare. So I can't bring up Herbert in the playoffs and Tua ain't never been there. What you mean? How am I making excuses for Herbert? There's no excuse to be made. Look at the screen. Look at the screen. What excuses are there to be made? Look at the screen. <laughs> Man, y'all want to talk about something too and never even experienced. Well, look at Herbert in the playoffs. Two ain't never been there. Let me get that man off the screen, man. I ain't trying to put Dolphin fans through more trauma looking at what a real quarterback looked like, especially for the given fact that we had every opportunity to get him and passed on him. Passed on him. Passed on him for a broken down player. Came into the league injured. Boy, oh boy. Tua had 25 touchdowns, eight interceptions. He should have had five interceptions. That would have been beautiful. But he decided to lose that Green Bay game single-handedly. Tua and Green Bay was worse than the Cowboys kicker the other day. At least they won. Y'all leave Ryan alone. He all right, man. I like when people do what he did. You give me an opportunity to get some out, get get a little bit of frustration out of me. <laughs> oh man, uh, let me know. When, oh Lord. Anyway, man, uh, the future, the future, the future. We don't know if it's bright. We don't know if it's dark, gloomy. We have no idea. But what we do know is, two is our QB one. So get behind him, support him, y'all. He's gonna take us to the Super Bowl. He gonna finally, you know, put up some Herbert type numbers next year. Hopefully, right. Hopefully he plays the full season. How many of y'all think that Tua can play a full season next year? How many of y'all think he can play the full season next year? Because that's what's going to be important. As a matter of fact, I'll poll it. Full season Tua? It's up. It's up. See, I'm the type of person that believes Miami is so, their pride is so ridiculous that Tua can have one of those off-season injuries that'll keep him out half a year and they still be like, as soon as he's healthy, I, I, I'm a firm belief. <laughs> oh, dang, I didn't think it would be that much. Where the Tua deers at? Y'all better stand up. Full season for Tua. You got 84% no. Has Tua played a full season in college? Nor the NFL. Nor the NFL. (laughs) 
Bon Joe, man. Hey, don't make me laugh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, now TD fans talk just asking stupid questions to kill time. Talking about Tua in a full season. Oh, my gosh. Man. Tua has never played a full season. Whew. What do we do? What do we do? This is what we got to deal with. Man, where my boy at? Why he ain't answer this question? He ain't want to answer the question? Alvin, I agree. I miss it. Um, we move. We need to move on from Tua, please. It ain't happening, James. It ain't happening. How you going to move on from the highest passer rating in the league? How you going to move on from the highest passer rating in the league? No. It's not happening, bro. Mm-mm. TD, what games you streaming Sunday? Both of them. Both of them. Uh, well, I'm in the middle of deciding right now if I'm going to stream the game Saturday, man. We got a dilemma. I really want to stream them games Saturday, but I also got a, a deep sea fishing trip that I can go on, and I'm just like, man, which one do I want to do? Because I do want to go fishing, but I'm like, man, take a little break. Mm, I'll decide. TD streaming them all. Yeah, I always, I should always stream them all. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, man, I got to make that decision. Uh, don't block me, TD. I ain't going to see none of my um, SC Super Chats, I guess. Seeing none of my... Uh, I didn't block you, bro, or nothing like that. Um, go fishing, cause it gets you your mind right. I know, I know, I'm debating. Then, uh debating it. I, I, I think about it, cause I also had some plans on that day, but I would have to cancel them all for early that day. So I just got to decide. Now I don't watch X League. Super chat CD. Oh, I didn't, I mean, I just read it. I didn't see no other one. I don't know. As far as the, um, no, I ain't going to talk about that. Uh, at TD, how many coaches will we fire to buy time for this QB not working out before we eventually move on from Tua? Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. We're not, we're not firing them that much more. That That's it. You got to understand, two on his last straws. They just trying to hold out hope that, oh, thank you. I'm so happy we stuck with it. Now, look, man, finally we made a good decision. Finally, two was the guy. And, you know, y'all know. Y'all have to understand, man. I, I already told y'all, bring T. Hill back, go fishing, TD. I just watched Dougley. I'll just watch Dougley do wrong. Yeah, man. Um. Like I just um I'm at a point where I really think that we're gonna go through a air a period of time where we just waste our time. I am telling y'all, we are wasting our time. We are wasting our time. And Tua is the perfect person to do it, man. I wouldn't be surprised. See, see, this is see, these are the type of things that happen with guys like Tua. Next year he comes back, right? We win eleven games. Everybody's and he don't play any better than he did last year. But you know, we did enough to win eleven games, right? And all of a sudden, everybody like, see, man, this this is it. And he play all the games too. He play all the games. First round exit, of course. We we out in the first round. And we're like, man, we won more games. That was 11. He, you know, he 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 was solid. You know, he wasn't great. He wasn't bad. He wasn't whatever. And then we're like, you know, we got to give him a contract. He's that perfect type of guy that's going to do that to you. And then all of a sudden you give him the contract. 
Then the very next year, in year five, oh, my gosh, the injuries again, whatever they are, ankle, toe, whatever. Then he got trash play. But you stuck in the contract now. And then right, right before that contract, okay, we finally about to get off. Oh, he playing better again. Oh, my gosh, we had some, a good season. Who is that guy? It's not a goalpost, Brian. More, I'm telling you, it's a trap. That's the goalpost. It ain't a goalpost to me moving the goalpost. I've been telling y'all this for two years. He's good enough not to be good. Tua is the worst type of quarterback to have. And here's why. He's good enough not to be good enough. I'm not saying the man is a scrub. He ha- He's good enough to not be good enough. And those are the guys that waste the most years. They not the Pat Whites. They not the bums where you're like, oh, no, we got to go get a guy. But they're also not the guys where you like, man, we got our guy. We still with nobody in their right mind is saying who is our guy. No, deep down, even in the two and near's heart, I know he can be our guy. That's in your heart. But out in the open, oh, he's our guy. That's just y'all hating. I believe he's a, when you say I believe. No. Nobody without a shadow of a doubt can sit here and be like, two is the guy, hands down, already proven. That's just, that's just delusion. Deep down in your soul, you know. Deep down in your soul, because you lie to yourself, you're a lot of whoever, and many of y'all lying to yourself. You will never with Tua be able to say, hands down, you will never be able to sit back and relax to where he don't need to be defended anymore. All y'all out here defending him, arguing with people about how good he is and how you're seeing it wrong and all this and that. He'll never be at a point to where you ain't got to do that. Because if Mahomes was your quarterback and somebody said he ain't as good as you think, you just laugh and sit back. You wouldn't even comment. You wouldn't even go back and forth with people. That's the point. That's the tell all. That's the tell all. When it's a real debate and it gets heated and everybody going back and forth, that tells you all you need to know. Ain't nobody going back and forth with nobody about no Mahomes. Ain't nobody going to be doing that. Ain't nobody going back and forth with the, the, the actual elite quarter, good, great quarterbacks. You say something like that, they, they, they people like, oh, all right, they'll agree with you just not to talk to you. Mahomes actually ain't that good. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I mean, I, I like them, but okay. <laughs> they won't even argue with you. They wouldn't even argue with you. None of y'all are sitting there like this guy talk about two ain't that great. <laughs> no, y'all just head first, man. What are you talking? You ready to argue? You ready to defend? Good, good quarterbacks. The great quarterbacks don't need defending. It's telling. Go fishing. Have a cold one on me. I got you, bro. Dang, you should have sent it to the cash shop, man. You should have sent it to the cash shop. YouTube going to take, because beer's by $8, bro. YouTube going to take four of that. So I got $6. I'll pay the other two for my beer, man. Next time, send my beer fund to the cash shop. <laughs> but no, man, y'all, y'all, and y'all know what I'm saying right now is a thousand percent true. You know, there's the, you know, deep down inside, you want him to be great. You want him to be the guy, but you know, he ain't proved that yet. You know that. And that's why he good enough not to be good enough because he'll never have us sitting back with our feet up. We got that dude. <laughs> he will never. He ain't got that upside. I done told you already. He done already exceeded his, his ceiling. The Lions game, the Bears, the Browns, he done exceeded his ceiling. And yeah, you're going to always get a few teams play that loose zone. Two are going to find them windows and strike them all day. That's the ceiling. Bad defense, great game, eating them alive in the zone. That's the ceiling. 
Now, if I see more games like that Green Bay game without the picks, now we talking about a guy who could be a franchise quarterback. Give me five of those in a year. Five tough defenses playing tight coverages and you just dropping dimes. Give me five of them in a year. Now we talking. Now we talking. Now we are talking. And maybe I could be wrong about all of this. I've never said that I I won't. You know, I'm I, I keep hoping that I'm wrong, but God dog, we three years in, and I'm still waiting to be wrong. I mean, I hope that that can happen. It will shock me, and and I want to be shocked. Y'all, I, like this. If you got that narrative, TD want two to fail. I don't want Tua to fail. I want him to prove me wrong and actually be great. Because that means we got that dude. Now, here's the issue I have with that. I don't like Tua Nears. I don't like their demeanor and attitude about things. They'll take a poop on everybody on the team just to uplift him. And when those other players on the team are Dolphins too. Another thing that I don't like is that we're already three years down and he ain't proved to be the guy and we ain't win nothing. You know the issue I have with that? Say he does become a winner one day. Why you got to become a winner after we pay you? What's the difference from going to get a $40 million quarterback? If Tua comes out in year four and he becomes the guy, that means we wasted all of the prime years to go get that ring and now you got to pay him $40 million a year. Why, you should have just went and got the $40 million guy. I needed them first three years for us to have the advantage over everybody else. That's the new cheat code in the NFL. Rookie quarterback that don't fall on their face and they're productive and they're helping the team, they winning. Burrow, Hurts. Even Mahomes when he was on the rookie deal. Josh Allen on year three, at least he did it then. Actually, he went to the playoffs in year one or two. He lost, but that's when you want to take advantage of that window. Ours is done. Now we don't have the rookie contract advantage, but one more year. That was the cheat code in the NFL. Bro, once y'all pay two or 40 million, y'all team um wrapped up. Yeah, man. I mean, go to every year we do this, 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 this survey, right? Not survey, but we do this um every year we do this um calculation. And we didn't do it this year, so we might as well do it now. NFL playoff teams. And every year, at least half. At least half of the NFL quarterbacks are on a rookie deal. Let's see what we got this year. All right. They're on a rookie deal or they're still getting um, the back end of that contract. I mean the front end of their new contract. And by the way, that makes me want to look this up. Patrick Mahomes cap hit this year. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Sorry. What was his cap hit this year? Because I think does he does his did his money cook in this year or next year? Internet? What is going on? Y'all give me a second. Can y'all see me and hear me? Can y'all see me and hear me? Because my thing saying I'm lost in the internet connection. Please let me know in the comment section. Can you see and hear me? Never mind. It should be back up now. It just rebooted. All right. Uh, Patrick Mahomes had a, see, God dog, boy, they do their books right. Well, he had a $36 million cap hit this year. 
Next year is 47 million. So they about to leave the window. So he he definitely don't count. Lord. Ugh. All right. Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. That's one. Um, is Josh Allen on his fifth year? Is Josh Allen on his fifth year? I don't know what year Josh Allen on. That bum. Let me see. We scammed y'all, TD. Oh, you in the Tyreek thing? Shy, I know. All right, Josh Allen this year, his cap hit was 16 million. Fifth year option. Um, <laughs> so he's still on it. He goes to 40 million next year, 39.8 million. And then the year after 41. So this is the last year for them. And he's done. Allen on his fifth year, I think. So that's two quarterbacks still with the low money. San Francisco, they they've been low. They had Trey Purdy and um Jimmy G. They restructured. Low money. Cowboys up there. Bengals low. Jacksonville low. Giants low. That's just eight teams right there and six of them. And that ain't all the teams. Hold on. Where are all my teams at? I'm trying to get the list. Y'all give me a second, man. This thing aggravating. Man, y'all got to be kidding me. I didn't ask you for no playoff ranking. Y'all bear with me. Twenty twenty-two NFL playoffs. I get. All right, here we go. All right, let's start this over. Jacksonville. Chargers, um, Cincinnati, Baltimore, still on a young deal. That's why they ain't getting it done. Um, Josh Allen, last year of his. Miami, uh, Tampa, no. Uh, Dallas, no. Minnesota, no. Giants, San Francisco, and Seattle with the Geno Smith situation. Nine out of 14 teams. This is what you got to deal with every year. Nine out of 14 teams. And the reason why is because these teams have these low quarterback deals. They can afford to have more weapons than the other teams. Unless you one of those elite quarterbacks or big boy teams, it's hard to get in. Because these young guys are getting in at a high clip. Guys in the first five years. Because they're it's the best their team will ever be. It's the best their team will ever be. And I always tell y'all, you determine an elite quarterback when they start making over $30 million. And for Mahomes to be making $35, $36 million this year as a cap hit, he's showing that he that dude. Even when he even when they gotta have less around him. He's that dude. He's that dude, man. Y'all overpaid Tyreek. Dolphins never learn. That's what I said when we traded for him. You can't be happy about nothing. No, I'm happy we got the playmaker because if it wasn't for him, we'd be nothing. Y'all got to understand. Let Tyreek forget an injury in week one. Oh, the, the, the loss is going to pile up. He's Don't get me wrong. He's worth paying, but not $30 million. It's just an overpay just to have him. And, and, and let's be honest, are we using Tyreek to his full potential? Even though he went off this year, are we using him to his full potential? Yes or no in the comment section? Are we using Tyreek Hill to his full potential? Mommy's here for you. <laughs> We're not using his full potential because he'd have at least seven more touchdowns on the season. 
all those deep balls that he got to wait for and then get tackled? No, his full potential is catching it on the go and running in for the touchdown. We're just not. But this is what we what it's come to. That's on the QB. We know, we know. We know. But it's still good for Tyreek to put up the numbers he's putting up with the limitations. Could have had 10 more TDs if Tua would just throw to his guy in stride. It's not bad. Tua has to throw it early and anticipate it without knowing what the defense is going to do if he's going to get more, but that's dangerous. That's pick zone. That's why when he processes and he see Tyreek open, he puts all he got into it, and Tyreek still got to slow down. But Tyreek be beating the defender so much, he can slow down. But that's also stupid zone play. You got to man up. Be on that back hip, even if he beats you. Um, Tyree returning punts without returning punts. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But um, you don't want Tyree returning punts, though, y'all. Now, in the playoffs, I thought he should have. I thought he should have in the playoffs. Regular season, no need to be putting him at risk of getting hurt. We misused Tyreek this year. Ironically, we used Tyreek this year the way we used Waddle in 2021. Sure did. Sure did. But I don't like an offense like the one we have. I want an equal opportunity offense. Hike the ball, process the field. What is the defense giving me? Let me go there. But our offense is hike, Tyreek, come open, cross the middle, clear out linebacker. Ugh, bam. Got him. Let's go. And teams going to catch in on to that. And maybe Tua get to a whole new level next year. But Tua ain't that type of guy. Tua the type of guy, okay, it, it was working this year. Let me do that and, and, and just, just keep on doing it. TD, I just got in. What, what you think of Boyer getting fired? It was inevitable. It was going to happen. Now I'm just worried about if we're going to see a major defensive change. And I ain't talking about so much personnel, but scheme. I agree. He greatly improved this year. Two ain't improved this year. He did what he always do well. He just had an opportunity to do it more. Wide open guys coming across the middle. Hit him. He's always been able to do it. The issue he's always had is intermediate throws where the linebacker has depth and is still there, but he got to have great touch. He still ain't doing those. What Tua's doing is throwing through windows. He not throwing those touch passes where there ain't a window, there's an area open. That's why when San Francisco backed up a little bit, in those zones, they took away those windows and said, the pad, the play is still there to be made, but it ain't going to be no straight window. You're going to have to go over me, which you can make. That's a throw that can be made. I just don't think you can make it and you can't make it consistently. That's the difference. He sells those throws too high. Same thing with the Chargers. That's why he was getting picked. So y'all thinking Tua is so accurate and amazing when he's throwing between linebackers. But remember, that play is still there to be made when the linebacker is right there in that path. It just takes a different type of throw. And Tua is not consistent with that throw. Has he made it before? Yeah. But he is highly inconsistent with those throws. So that's why Mike McDaniel runs a lot of crossers so that if it ain't, hey, wait till he clear or anticipate in the window. Don't do nothing outside of the window to him. So, hey, that's easy football. Just throwing in the zone between windows. Ain't got to worry about a defender picking it off. 
But when you run into a defense that say we ain't going to give you no windows, but the play still there to be made, you just got to make one of them big boy throws. You got to put the right amount of touch where it's over my arm, my, my arm, so I can't bat it, but it's also can drop in where it don't sail to the safety. He ain't making those. He ain't improving those. He doing what he always did well, just like with Flores. Quick slants, quick slant With Flores, when he doing that? The slants coming across, same thing. It's just now they got more depth. With Flores, those were 7 to 10. With Mike McDaniel, they're 10 to 15-yard crossers. But it's still in windows. That's all Tua does is throw in windows. And nothing's wrong with that. That is a beautiful thing. So he, and he makes it work. But every defense are, ain't going to give you the windows. Now what? So you could think he improved. No, they just put him in a situation to do what he already did well more. So now you're seeing more production. That's it. Good enough to not be good enough while being consistently inconsistent. That's the knock on Tua. Consistently inconsistent. Tua played great this year. Did he also have did he also play bad this year? Did he also play bad this year? When you really go do the math, go look at how many great games versus how many bad games. Go do the math. I'm telling y'all now, Dolphins going to be sick next year. Y'all not winning more than five games. Nah, we'll win more than five. If we don't win more than five, man, you already know I'm going to be ballistic over here. Tua's not getting his team to the big show. If he does, I will be very surprised. Me too. And I hope he does. <laughs> I mean, I that would be lit again. I mean, I hope he does. That would be amazing. I don't want to count the kid out. I just don't believe he will, but I ain't going to count him out. Anything's possible. And if he could be that dude, man, whew, whew. We'll see. Uh, TD, uh, oh no, TD passing jets are going to be good as uh, y'all think about it. Yeah. But, you know, again, a new season, we just got to see what it brings, you know. Maybe we start out 10 and 0. Who knows? Um, But we'll see. Lamar will either be a jet, Falcon, Saints, or stay with the Ravens next year. I mean, these situations, you, you think he'll stay with the Ravens. You know, he hasn't publicly been disgruntled and say, I'm out of here. You know? He hasn't done any of that. So, um, he could be back there. Um, here's, well, here's what I would say. As a Dolphin fan, you should, if we're not going to get another guy, that's all fine. But we should be more concerned about who the Patriots and the Jets do get. That's what we need to be focusing on. That That's what matters. So I'm telling y'all, with the Jets' defense, so we're going to be learning a new scheme next year nine times out of ten. So these guys got to get used to it, all of that stuff. Lamar getting franchise tag, he ain't leaving. He ain't going to play on no franchise tag. He's not going to play on a franchise tag. That's going to be a disaster for Baltimore. He'll sit and chill before he play on that, that franchise tag. They know that. They know good and well he ain't going to play on no franchise tag. He's not going to be a one year at a time rental for you to, if for him to have a major injury one day and then 
then he ain't making the big bucks. He won't. They're going to waste their time. Because their salary cap is going to have to be allocated as if they are paying them, even if he sit out. So they ain't even going to be able to have enough around them. Plus, they'll still need a quarterback. You better be worried about who the Jets and the Patriots get in the offseason. And the Patriots having all that money. Something tell me Mike Gusecki had it headed to New England. Something telling me Mike Gusecki is staying in this division, y'all. Something is telling me Mike Gusecki is going to stay in his division. I know what it is, but it's something telling me that. Who can we reasonably get that's better than Tua with our cap and draft pick situation? Is Tua our best option? Uh, the best thing we could do is go get Brady. Low cap hit because the way he con sets his contract up because he just wants to win the Super Bowl. Brady will be a low cap hit. He won't cost any draft picks. And people need to realize you could still keep Tua. You just tell Tua, man, we had to bring in insurance. And on top of that, this still this also gives you an opportunity to continue to develop. Come on, TD. He's washed. Yeah, um, y'all need to stop that foolishness talking about Brady washed. Y'all said the same thing when we played them that last game in New England. When we got him on that pick six. And he looked like a bum because he was disinterested and didn't care. Then he come out the next year and win a Super Bowl. Brady will allow you to have enough money to still go get some O-line help. So you can really establish a run game. Because the beauty of Brady is this. It's sitting at that line of scrimmage and knowing game time situation when a pass play call, when to check into a run. When a run play call, when to check into a pass. That's the beauty of a guy like Brady right now. Knowing when he got your defense on tilt and off guard. Knowing when you're trying to send a sub package and hurrying up and getting them together. All of that stuff, man. That's the difference in Brady because he can still deliver the rock. And y'all got to understand all Brady's incompletions when he be throwing in the dirt and all of that, he's just protecting himself, which we wish Tua would do. In his mind, ain't no need to, for me to get hurt. Get rid of it. Let's live the fight another day. And I don't care. Let's go. Anyway, man. We just over two hours. Um, I'm gonna end this stream. Come back with to y'all later. Y'all know all. I couldn't get this breaking news with boy yesterday. I got um, caught up with the fam. Um, but I knew y'all knew this was gonna happen. We already knew he was gonna be the scapegoat anyway. Uh, so we'll see. Um, but love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in in this midday hour with me, rocking with me. I appreciate your love and support. Yeah, Malachi, I'm going to try my best to stream later today. It depends. If I go fishing on a deep-sea fishing trip, then no, because I need to prepare for it. So I ain't going to guarantee a stream later today. All right? But love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Fins up no matter what. I appreciate everybody's love and support. Thank y'all so much, man. Fins up. We still might win the Super Bowl next year. All right? Miami lost five key players on defense, too. Just wait. Yeah, time will tell. Peace. I'm out.